TitleMatchNetwork.com. How'd you wind up uh, working for Vince again at the uh, Gimmick Battle Royal at Mania? Uh, just a just a out of the blue phone call. Before that, I went I went back up there for I just did uh, some TVs. I did two TVs for them just as a uh, they call it a tryout, you know, tryout match. And, um, Isn't it kind of weird that a guy's been in the business for like 20 years and needs to do a tryout match? Exactly. That's yeah. what I thought. I yeah. thought it was insane. <laughs> and, then, and the bad thing was, you you know, they call you up, you know, and you're like, we want to bring you up for a tryout match. And then they're like, uh, you know, have you got any video you can send us? And I <laughs> said, Who are you? all you got to do is pull out a WrestleMania. Look at that. You know, <laughs> my God, I work for the company. I've been wrestling for 25 years. Right. And they want you to send videotapes and they bring me up there for a tryout match. So I had to put over the old one of them old headbanger dudes, you know, the first night. Second night, they put me with some kid. I don't even know who he was. Uh, I went over him, you know. and then Did you work as gang or as a keen? I worked as gang. Okay. One man gang. And uh, basically, that was all it was. I came back home and then old Bruce Pritchard called me the next day or whatever. And, well, you know, we just, we don't have a spot for you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so that went, that went that way. And then. In between all this time, you know, I went I went to Japan for a couple of years. I worked for a little independent company there. Right. What company it, was that for? I I don't even remember the name of the company. It was just a little independent company. But uh, people think I was just totally, you know, disappeared. But I was out of the country mainly, you know. I right. To Japan. Did the tour of Australia. Was you know. And then I started doing uh, military bases. Did a lot of those out of the country. So I was busy. You know what I'm saying? I was still making my living. Really doing sometimes better than when I was with big companies, you know, making more money. When you went back to Mania, how, how were you received by Vince? Uh, seemed like it was all right. He was, uh, you know, I, don't know, I just met him real quick one time out in the hallway in between whatever was going on, you know, and he asked me how how's everything going and your family having a good time and everything. I said, everything's beautiful, you know, everything was taken care of. That's all he basically wanted to know. He said, I'm glad, you know, that you can – you know, that you came in for the show, you know, and I thanked him for having me on the show and whatever. It wasn't like I went to him trying to get a job or nothing. You know, I wasn't expecting that. Right. You know, I was just, I was really honestly surprised that they offered me the shot in the first place because I was out of the country when the <coughs> call came in from Howard Finkel. I was out of the country on one of these uh, base tours, you know, and then my wife, I called home and she said, you know, uh, WWF called, you know, the guys over there was telling me already, you know, you know, you're going to be in the gimmick battle royal. Huh. You know, I guess they'd seen internet or something. I said, well, I didn't even know what they were talking about. A gimmick battle royal. I don't even know what that, what it is. <laughs> well, at WrestleMania, they're going to have a gimmick battle royal. They mentioned in your name. Said, oh, really? So I called home and my wife said, you know, it's a uh, Howard Finkel called, you know, wanting you to get in touch with him as soon as possible. You know, they wanted to bring you in for WrestleMania, a gimmick battle royal. You know, so from the first day I got back, I called, you know, got in touch with Howard Finkel, and they were interested in me coming in as Akeem, but I didn't have no Akeem outfit, and I didn't have none of the outfit, because at that particular time, I was 450 pounds, you know, and I'd lost like 100 pounds or better, you know, between that time and then, so the outfit wouldn't didn't wear right, <clears throat> and he said, well, it's kind of late, you know, we can't, we don't have time to make you an outfit now. He said, "Well, let me get, let me talk to Vince. I'm gonna see if he'll bring, he'll bring you in as a one man gang." So I said, "All right, just give me a call." So a couple of days later, you know, he called back and said, "Everything's good. Come on in. You know, everything's good. Come in as a one man gang." All right. Huh. So I showed up in Houston as a one man gang, and basically, you know, I met all these guys, all the the guys he had, except for the the crew he brought in for the wrestle mommy for the gimmick battle roll. I never met these guys before. The new guys you're talking about, like the, the Rock guys. and all. Yeah, exactly. I never met them before. You know, like that's the first time I'd ever met the Undertaker. I never met him before. Wow, how these guys uh, received you? Like, uh, basically, like any other. When I go into a strange dressing room, it's like, man, that's the one. I hate to say that, <laughs> but that's the way it really they do. That's the one man gang. You know, they come over shaking my hand like they're big. You know, these are the big stars, and now you know, but and they're like, man, I'm I'm out. I watched you do this and that and blah, blah, the same, you know, and these, these are the big name stars of the company doing this, you know, and I'm like, man, this ain't right. I didn't realize I had this effect on people, you know.